present Arthur Lowe, John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> the Honourable Man, featuring John Lorry, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender with this week's guests, Bill Pertwee, Julian Orchard, Larry Martin and Fraser Carr. <laughs> Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. It is late July 1941, and following Hitler's attack on the Soviet Union in June, Britain and Russia have signed a mutual aid pact against a common foe. Cooperation between the two countries is of the utmost importance. At the town hall in Warmington-on-Sea, the town clerk is addressing an important meeting. Now, gentlemen, as you know, we are gathered here as a general purposes committee to discuss the arrangements for the visit of this Russian fellow to Warmington-on-Sea. Before we start the official business, I think it would be a good idea if I checked that everyone who's meant to be present is in fact here. Call the roll, you mean? <laughs> yes, that's right, Captain Mannering. <clears throat> if you could uh, just uh, answer your names, I think that would be the quickest way. Yes, I quite agree. Good idea. <laughs> so glad you approve. Right. Captain Mannering? Yes. Uh, <laughs> are you here? Well, of course I'm here. You've just been talking to me. <laughs> Yes, of course. Oh, get on with it. We shall be here all night at this rate. <laughs> yes, well, I uh, think we can also regard Mr. Hodges as being present, too. Uh, Mr. Fraser? Hi, I'm here. Uh, Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson? I'm sorry, he, uh, he doesn't seem to have turned up yet. Most unlike any of my men to be late. I see. Well, uh, we'll move on. Uh, Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones? <clears throat> He's another of my men. I'm sure there must be a very good reason for his absence. Yes, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Uh, now, what about Mr. Walker? Is he present? Yeah, I'm here. And for once, Mr. Manor, I'll bet you're all glad to see me. Well, there are one or two absentees, but I, I think we'd better make a start. Hey, what about me? I'm here. Sit down, Pike. <laughs> you are here merely as a runner. That's not <clears throat> fair. That's not fair. Look. How can I run if I'm sitting down? Be quiet. <laughs> quiet, boy. Carry on, Mr. Upton. Oh, thank you, Captain Mannering. Now, as town clerk, it has fallen to my lot to find a suitable man to coordinate and mastermind our arrangements. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one man who's outstandingly suitable for this task, and I'm going to move over and ask him, with your approval, I'm sure, to take the chair. Captain George Mannering. Hey, j j just a minute, just a minute. Why do we have to have him as chairman? Russians don't want officers and bank managers and all that snobbish rubbish? Well, from the inquiries that I've made round the town, it seemed to me that Captain Mannering was the best choice. Well, I don't agree. I think we ought to have an ordinary bloke. A, a greengrocer or somebody like that. <laughs> do, we, uh, do we know a greengrocer? Yes, me. <laughs> If there's any dissent, I'll gladly stand down. Yeah, it's a good idea. I'll second that. I'll tell you what. Now, Captain Mannering, the simplest thing is for you to vacate the chair, then I'll take the chair and we'll take a vote. Yes, yes, very well. Stand by for a quick game of musical chairs. <laughs> <laughs> now then, all in favour of Captain Mannering taking the chair, raise their hands. One, two, three, four. Well, that seems to settle that. It's hardly worth counting those against. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, oh very well. Against? One. <laughs> Carried by four to one. Captain Mannering will take the chair, which I shall now vacate. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Is it all over? No, of course it isn't. <laughs> Town clerk and I are just changing our positions. Oh, really? You've got cramp or something. <laughs> Don't be absurd. Why are you late? Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, I thought you said the meeting was at half past. I said quarter past. You don't listen. There's a seat here, Mr. Wilson. Oh, thank you, Walker, thank you. Yeah, we just had the best bit. Oh, he's trying to give Manor in the elbow. Ah. <laughs> sorry I missed that. <laughs> Mr. Town Clerk, ladies and gentlemen. There aren't any ladies here. Haven't you noticed? The order, please. Oh, Tar, I love a large scotch. <laughs> <laughs> We're assembled here to honour the Russian worker, uh, Vladislav... Uh, Vladis, Vla, uh, uh, the point is, <laughs> he's a hero of the Soviet Union. Now, 
On his goodwill trip, he's going to visit, amongst other places, Warmington-on-Sea. And naturally, we should provide some form of official welcome. The thing is... Uh, Evening, everybody. I'm sorry I'm late, but it's been one of those days. Yes, all right, John. You see, I, I had a bunch of sausage skins what was very diaphanous. <laughs> It was all right when I filled them, but when the ladies cooked them, the heat caused them to splurge, you see, oh. sir. And the ladies, they don't like that sort of thing, you know, sir. <laughs> Splurging is obnoxious to yes, them, they yes, 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 I'm sure. <laughs> Most distressing, yes. <coughs> now, as I was about to say, what form should our welcome to Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this Russian take? Come on, Link. I've been given the matter most careful thought, and uh, I'm prepared to offer him a voucher worth ten pounds... Towards the cost of a funeral. <laughs> Blimey. He won't be able to take advantage of that unless he pigs out while he's over here. That's uh, a risk I have to take. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we give him the freedom of vomit? Yeah, that's right. Why not? And we could let him go into the cinema for nothing. <laughs> Blimey, Park, he's only going to be here for a couple of hours. Well, they could put on Mickey Mouse and a Donald Duck. Oh. <laughs> Pike, Pike, Pike. Pike. Sir? You kindly remember you're not on this committee. You're a messenger boy. And he's trying to be helpful? If you say another word, I shall send you back to the church hall and make you wait in my office on your own, with the door shut. <laughs> it's not fair. Why can't I make suggestions? Just because I'm the youngest, I always have to keep quiet. It's not will fair. You, will, you be, will you be quiet? Will you be quiet? Sorry about that, gentlemen. <laughs> now, to get back to the matter under discussion, I think Wilson made a very good suggestion. The question is, what form should the freedom take? Well, how about a parchment scroll? They're very nice, they are. Well, of course, parchment isn't easy to come by nowadays, but I reckon I can lay my hands on some. <laughs> well, uh, what about a key? Ah, yes. We'll arrange some sort of ceremonial presentation, and then I, as chairman of the committee... We'll hand it over to him. Oh, got yourself in there quick enough, didn't you, Napoleon? Uh, excuse me, Count Manling. Music! I don't hear anything. <laughs> that, that's what we need, man. Music. Town band playing and the church choir singing the red flag. <laughs> oh, you should have heard what that choir was singing behind the scout out last night, Manling. <laughs> <laughs> Would have made your hair stand on end. If you had any. <laughs> So why don't we have the town band playing Russian type music and I will dress up as a Cossack and do me cobblers. I beg your pardon? <laughs> <laughs> cobblers, sir, these are highly difficult kicking and crouching steps what the Cossacks do, sir. They do a lot of kicking and crouching and cobbling. Cossacks really? do, sir. They really? go, hop, hey, oh, we, hop, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to practice, of course. Yes. Thank you very much, Joe. We'll consider your suggestion. Now, the Home Guard will parade, of course. Captain Mannerin, uh, I assume uh, Sergeant Wilson will be giving a demonstration of acrobatic motorcycle riding, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what about it, Mr. Wilson, eh? Motorcycle riding? <laughs> uh, perhaps I should explain. <laughs> this is a joke at the expense of my sergeant. We have a motorcycle in the platoon, but so far... He hasn't been persuaded to mount it. Well, they're such awfully noisy things, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, that's another matter. The thing is that one way or another, the arrangements for this visit seem to be taking shape. I shall now go ahead and coordinate these various suggestions, and I feel sure that, as usual, Warmington-on-Sea will rise to the occasion. And bore the pants off everybody. And bore... Pike! <laughs> like I warned you, go back to the church hall and wait for me in my office. All right. Uh, uh, with the door shut. All right, I'm going. Right, gentlemen, I think that concludes our meeting. And don't think I shan't tell my mum about you. <laughs> Pike. Yes, Mr. Manreen? Ask Mr. Wilson to come and see me, please. Oh, he's not back from lunch yet, Mr. Manreen. Not back from lunch? It's twenty past two. Oh. Tell him I want to see him the second he gets in. All right, Mr. Manreen. Oh, by the way, Mr. Manreen, here's the 12 o'clock post. It came at five past two. Mm. Hey, and look at this one. Someone's playing a joke on mm. Uncle Arthur. 
to the Honourable Arthur Wilson. <laughs> Let me see that envelope. To the Honourable Arthur Wilson, private. Does that mean he isn't a sergeant anymore? <laughs> Stupid boy. Come in. Excuse me, sir. Did I, uh, did I leave my banshee on your desk? You leave your what? My banshee. <laughs> my rubbing out thing. Oh, never mind about that. <laughs> I want you, Wilson. Shut the door. Right. Well, sir, <clears throat> what can I do for you? This letter, Wilson. I should be obliged if you would ask your friends to keep their practical jokes out of my bank. Look at this on the envelope. Oh, Lord, that wretched solicitor. I told him not to use the title of my letters. Oh, blast. What are you talking about? Oh, well, <laughs> well, it seems to be all around the town now. I suppose you'll be bound to find out sooner or later. Are you trying to tell me that this letter isn't a joke? Oh, anything but, I'm afraid. And you really are the Honourable Arthur Wilson? Yes. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I think it's wonderful. Thank Leave you. the room, Pike. <laughs> yes, Mr. Manry. Then close the door. Oh, all right. <laughs> now, Wilson. Mm -hmm. Mind explaining yourself? Well, it's, uh, it's just that this uncle of mine died, you see, sir, and he didn't have any children, so my side of the family all moved up one, so to speak, you see? So now I'm <laughs> the Honourable. I see. Yes. Well, there's no reason why it should make any difference to me. You can really? bet your bottom dollar it won't make any difference to you. <laughs> and you needn't think you can start rolling in 20 minutes late after lunch, either. Where have you been? Well, I popped up and had a bite to eat at the golf club. Who took you to the golf club? I'm a member. You remember? <laughs> Since when? Well, you see, uh, they heard about this title thing and they, they asked me if I'd like to join. Oh, I've been trying to get into the golf club for years. <laughs> but I believe they're awfully particular. <laughs> you don't even play. No, I know I don't, but I shall enjoy the food, you see. Do you, they managed to find some smoked salmon for me at lunchtime. Oh... Smoked salmon at the golf club. Yes. All I had was a snook fish cake at the British restaurant. <laughs> I find this quite unbelievable. You, the Honourable Arthur Wilson. Yes. Well, it does have a certain sort of a ring to it, don't you think? Anyway, even if you do consider yourself part of the aristocracy, just to remember that as far as this bank is concerned, I am still the manager and you are still the clerk. Oh, yes, of course, sir. And what's more, remember that I am still the officer and you are still the sergeant. So pull your socks up and get on with your work. All right, sir, yes, sir, yes. And don't be late for this evening's parade either. No, sir, no, no. Honourable Arthur Wilson. Yes, Pike, what is it? Mr. Manreen, the area manager's on the telephone. He's been hanging on for quite a while, but I didn't put him through because I knew you were talking to the Honourable Uncle Arthur. Did <laughs> you really? Put him through now. Yes, Mr. Manring. Hello? Manring here, sir. Sorry to have kept you waiting, sir. No, I was in conference with my chief clerk. N N w Wilson. Yeah. Well, actually, it's the, uh, it's the Honourable Arthur Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I always pick my staff for the great K, Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you, sir? If it's about the... Uh, of course, when I was a regular soldier, we had a lot of officers who were honourable. Well, at least they were called honourable. Anyway, these honourables used to stand in a haughty manner, as if they had a nasty smell under their noses. <laughs> I'll say this for them, they were very good at keeping stiff upper lips. We had one officer at the Battle of Omdurman, he had his head blown off, but his upper lip was still as stiff as carpet. <laughs> Being honourable hasn't changed Uncle Arthur a bit, you know. He still calls me Frank like he was an ordinary common person. Oh, it won't change him. He was a fool before and he's a fool now. <laughs> I used to serve one or two honourables when I was in the Army and Navy stores. They were just ordinary people like any other customers. The only difference was you couldn't get the money from them. <laughs> All right, fall in, please. Fall in. Oh, Three breaths. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, hurry up. Settle down. Uh, permit to speak, sir? Yes, Jones. Uh, could you set the small technical discussion, sir? 
Do we address Sergeant Wilson as the Honourable Sergeant Wilson or Sergeant the Honourable Wilson? Oh. <laughs> well, please, please, please. I, I don't want any fuss. I, I just want to be like an ordinary sergeant, sir. Mm. I gave up any hope of your behaving like an ordinary sergeant long ago. <laughs> right, men. Uh, let's go over our part of the ceremony where I hand over the key. Commanding, why are you handing it over? I, I think the Honourable ought to do it. I don't agree. Captain Mannering always does this sort of thing with great dignity. Yeah, that's right, he does. Thank you, Walker. Mind uh, you, I think there's a lot to be said for a change. <laughs> well, I look at it this way. Sergeant Wilson may have three stripes on his honourable arm, but you, Captain Mannering, still have three pips on your common shoulders. <laughs> so there's still one up to you, even if you are common. <laughs> You've got a better insignia, and that is how it should be, because that is the status quo. Thank you, Jones. With regard to Saturday's ceremony, I've been doing some research into the way these Russian chaps show appreciation. Apparently they don't cheer like we do, but instead they applaud. So I think that's what we ought to do. Yeah, but Mr. Mannering, if we present arms and then clap hands, there will not be a lot of blue toes around the platoon. <laughs> I don't have to be told that, thank you, Walker. We shall have to find some other method. Well, why don't we ground arms? Then we can clap away till the cars come home. Precisely. <laughs> Just what I was about to say. Oh, yes, of course, yes, of course. Testing you, Wilson. Yes, uh -huh. yes, very clever, I think. Very clever. Mr. Speaker? Yes, Jones. Well, we haven't done any grounding at late, sir. Could we have a go now, sir, and then we could all get familiar? <laughs> Good idea, Jones. Squad, squad. Hey! Try and keep up, Jones. <laughs> Ground arms. One, two, two three. three. Uh, up. Applause for the Russian hero. Begin. Oh, thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs> I didn't expect such a nice welcome. Good evening, Mr. Upton. What can we do for him? Well, it's about the Russian visit. Uh, can I have a word with you, Captain Mannering? Yes, yes, of course. Carry on, Wilson. Oh, yes, Captain Mannering. Uh, oh, yeah, good evening, Mr. Upton. Oh, good evening. <laughs> yeah. Now, how can I help you? Well, I, uh, I hope you won't take this amiss, but we feel that since Mr. Wilson has come into a title, and we haven't any other title people in Walmington, well, uh, uh, the Honourable Arthur ought to present the key. Hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I couldn't possibly allow such a thing. Now, let's be quite clear about this. I'm presenting the key, and that is an end to the matter. Well, of course, if you feel like that... I do. I'll leave you to let yourself out through the side door. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Captain Mannering. Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> You've engineered all this, haven't you, Wilson? Oh, believe me, sir. I wish it had never happened. Oh, yes. Yes, I can believe that. Oh, really, sir, really. I mean, I, I didn't ask to belong to the golf club. I, I'm getting begging letters, and how Mrs. Pike wants me to buy a pipe, a tweet, hat, and a Labrador. <laughs> really, I mean, life isn't worth living anymore. Don't give me all that soft soap. You're reveling in it. Oh, really, sir, really, really. Now, just remember what Jones said. I've got three of these pips, and all you have is three miserable stripes. On Saturday, I shall be presenting that key... And do you know what you're going to be doing before the ceremony? I really have no idea. You're going to ride that motorcycle, hmm? Sergeant Wilson. And I'm going to supervise your departure, personally. Has the bike got enough petrol in it, Joe? Yeah, I think so, Pikey. Anyway, I can't get my hands on any more until next week. So it'll have to be OK. Is the bike ready, Walker? Yes, sir. Good. Captain Manreen? If Uncle Sergeant the Honourable Wilson falls off... <laughs> you know, and, and breaks his leg... Look, can I have the bike for a bit, please? Do be quiet, Pike. Well, Why on earth is Wilson taking so long to get ready? He's putting on his protective clothing, sir. I did it some flying goggles I brought back from France during the 1418 war, sir. And he's borrowed my cold store boots. And I've, uh, I've lent him my old overalls. I wear them when I'm embalming. How very... <laughs> How very appropriate. Look, here he comes now. Blimey, it's Amy Johnson. Morning, everybody. Well, hurry up and get mounted, Wilson. 
You've got time for an hour's spin before the ceremony. Wouldn't uh, ten minutes be enough? Of course it wouldn't. Right. Carry on, Jones. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, remember, Mr. Wilson, you uh, squeeze the clutch with your left hand, yes. then you kick upwards onto the gear with your right foot, mm -hmm. and rev up with your right hand by doing a sort of thrum, 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 thrum. Right. And then you let out a clutch with your left hand like you was unsqueezing a lemon. <laughs> there you are, Wilson. Couldn't be simpler. Unsqueezing a lemon. Come on. Get the bike started. I'll give you a hand. Come on, Mr. Wilson. Oh, thank Come you, Jonesy. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Wilson. Off you go. We'll see you at the ceremony in about an hour. Yes, well, yes, yes. I suppose so. Well, goodbye, everybody. Yes, yeah, I'll rev up, Mr. Wilson. Rev up. From, from, from. Unsqueeze your lemon. <laughs> Captain Manley, do you think I ought to follow him on a bicycle with my first aid kit? No, no, no. No, <laughs> no it's high time Sergeant Wilson learned to fend for himself. Right, men. Fall in for inspection. And then in half an hour we'll move off down to the clock tower for the official parade. Quite a number of people have turned up to watch the ceremony go. Yes, sir, I expect they all come to see you do your presentation bit, sir. Yes, yes, I suppose so. I say, sir, the men all look very smart, don't they? Yes, yes, they do indeed. By Jove, getting very near the big moment. It's almost three o'clock. I see the mayor's already in position on the platform. I must say, Sergeant Wilson's running it a bit fine. I wonder where he's got to. Ah, I should have been here by now. Perhaps Sergeant Wilson has become disassociated from his motorbike in some obscure place of which we know not. <laughs> yes, I suppose that's possible. If you've killed my Uncle Arthur, <laughs> my mum will never let you hear the end of it. <laughs> you be quiet, Pike. I'm sure he's perfectly all right. Still, you must admit, sir, it's not like Mr. Wilson not to telephone or something. Perhaps you can't find a phone box. Yeah, you know, I used to have that trouble when I was first out in the Sudan. I wouldn't have thought they had any phone boxes in the Sudan. They haven't. <laughs> That's why I couldn't find one. I still can't understand why Sergeant Wilson hasn't telephoned. There are lots of phone boxes in this country. Well, maybe he didn't have any pennies on him. I used to try and carry money about with me, especially for the telephone, but then just when I needed some pennies, I always found I'd already spent them. <laughs> Ah, oh, good afternoon, Captain Mavering. Are your men quite ready? Yes, 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 of course. Uh, by the way, where is Mr. Wilson? He doesn't seem to be lined up with the rest of your unit. No. No, he hasn't returned from his motorcycle training yet. Ah, oh, by the sound of it, I think something's happening. Yes. Rather looks like it. Yes, here comes the Russian staff car. Stand by, everybody. Not yet, not, not yet. Wait until the car door opens. Number one, for two, round, come. One, two, three, up, up. Clap in and cheer in the Russian visitor. Come in. All right. I say, there'll be enough of that. Thank you. <coughs> Comrade Vladislavsky, on behalf of Hello, the... everybody. Merci, me. I'm but not late, am I? Hmm? What do you mean, I'm not late, am I? Where on earth have you been? What are you doing in the official Russian car? Shush, Mr. Mannering. Ah, Comrade Vladislavsky, if you'll follow me, I'll show you to your place. Da, da. <laughs> Come over here, Wilson. Now, what's going on? Why are you so filthy? Well, well it, it's really quite simple, sir. I, I, I was bowling along on the motor bicycle, quite enjoying it, as a matter of fact. Mm. <laughs> and all of a sudden, out of a side turning, came a large car, in fact, this car. Anyway, I had to swerve, you know, quite violently to miss it. Go on. I'm fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as soon as Comrade Vladislavsky realized what had happened, he stopped his car, helped me up personally, and offered to take me to the nearest hospital. Luckily, however, I hadn't actually been hurt in the accident, so I declined his offer. See? Look, Wilson, mm -hmm. if you don't get to the point quickly, you may well need to take him up on it. <laughs> See? Well, <clears throat> anyway, in the course of our conversation, he found out I was on my way here for the ceremony, and since the motorcycle was rather badly broken, he insisted I came with him in his car. So, there you are, you see. Here I am. 
Well, it's better late than never, isn't it? In your case, no. <laughs> My lords, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for Captain Manor. That's you, sir. Yes, I'm well aware of that. Thank you, Wilson. I'll talk to you later. Captain Mannering, everybody's waiting. <clears throat> Comrade Vladislav... Uh, Vladislav... Vladis <laughs> Honoured guest, <laughs> your worship, the mayor, ladies and gentlemen, on this auspicious occasion, it gives me great pleasure, on behalf of the citizens of Warmington-on-Sea, to welcome you to our fair town. Comrade Vladimir, 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 hero of the Soviet Union, you and I are united in our common struggle, although we live poles apart. God blimey, Jonesy, trust men are in the mention of poles. <laughs> we greet you as a brother in arms, and we are very proud and honoured to present you with this key, which symbolises the freedom of Warmington on Sea. Niet. What does niet mean, oh, Wilson? From the look on his face, sir, and the way he's pushing that key away, I think it fairly obviously means no. I represent the workers of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. You people sitting here are not workers. Your faces are soft and clean. Your hands are soft and clean. You are bourgeois middle class. Damn cheek. <laughs> and you wish to honor me? Is it not better that you should honor one of your own workers? For example, that man over there. Who? Oh, me? Yes, you comrade. Hey, look, Mr. Godfrey. He's pointing at Uncle Arthur. Are you quite sure? You don't think he means Captain Manry? Sure, of course not, you silly old duffer. He said worker. <laughs> Comrade, come over here. Let me shake you by the hand. Oh, I said, really, it's awfully generous of you. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive all this grease and dirt. Sycophant. Hmm? <laughs> Look, everybody. Here is a man in the uniform, not, not of, of an, an officer, officer not, not of an imperialist, imperialist, but that of a of slave, slave worker. worker. Slave worker, my foot is my chief clerk. <laughs> he has the dirt of the worker on his hands. He has the sweat of the worker on his brow. Uncle Arthur, better have a good wash before he gets home or Mum won't give him his tea. <laughs> I shall be honoured to present this key to your town of Walmington, to my fellow worker. Here, comrade, it is yours. Oh, I say, thank you so much. How awfully civil of you. <laughs> And now I must go. Do svidaniya. Oh, shut up! In that episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessure as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Laurie, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, Chief Warden Hodges, Larry Martin, Private Walker, Julian Orchard, Mr. Upton, the town clerk, and Fraser Carr as the visiting Russian. The Honourable Man was adapted for radio by Harold Snowd and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dias.